Did you know rabbits can sleep for an average of 8.4 hours? Well, they can. Since the name of our game is the jumping rabbit, can you guess how far or how high a rabbit can jump? I'll tell you that. A rabbit can jump up to 3 meters long and 1 meter high. Also, they can see the things that's behind them. Interesting, right? Rabbits are also social animals. They love to be together and care for one another. As responsible individuals, we should also be there for one another. Also, don't forget to be kind to yourself. So, before we move on to today's session, let's take a glimpse of what we did in the last session. Well, in the last session, we learned to add a game over backdrop to our game so that Whenever the rabbit is hit by one of the obstacles, the current backdrop will be replaced by the game over backdrop. For that, we duplicated the game screen backdrop. Then we added a text named game over. To add points to this game, two new sprites were introduced, an apple and a carrot sprite. A gliding motion was then applied to both sprites to make them move from right to left when the rabbit collects either the apple or the carrot it should disappear so as to illustrate that the rabbit is collecting the apple and the carrot we added two if then conditional blocks so that the apple and carrot sprite disappears when the rabbit touches them finally when the rabbit collects apple and carrot the score increases by 1 To display the points on the stage, we added a scoreboard. Today, we will learn to create an intro backdrop, that is, a game start backdrop for our game. So, let's begin. Scratch Senior. Now we have to load all the previous contents back to the workspace. Just like in the previous session, click on File, select Load from your computer. Now select the file, the Jumping Rabbit. Click on OK. And yes, we have now reached the final phase of our game. Click on the flag. Here I found a mistake. As the game ends when our rabbit jumps, the rabbit will remain in the jumping position even when the game restarts. So, let's change the position of the rabbit in such a case. For that, first choose the rabbit sprite and then go to motion. Now, drag the go to xy block and place it just below the when flag clicked block. Now, We need an intro screen to the game. So, it's time to set up the intro backdrop of the game. You have already learned to download the images from the internet. As I have already downloaded a backdrop, I am going to use that. So, I have the image on my desktop. I am selecting it. Click on open. You see There's an empty space on the top and bottom sides of my image. So, we have to stretch it on both sides. It can be done by using the select tool. Click on it. Choose the image as a whole and stretch it both ways so that it covers the entire stage. Now, we can give a title to our game. Let's call it The Jumping Rabbit. So click on the text tool type the jumping rabbit make the text color black for that select the entire text click on fill and turn the brightness to its minimum change the font style to curly 
Now get back to code. Whenever we click the flag or in the beginning of the game, the screen must be first screen. While adding an intro page, we need to make some changes to the existing codes. First of all, select the new backdrop. Then drag and drop when flag clicked to the workspace. Attach the switch backdrop to first screen from the looks tool to this block. Now select rabbit sprite from the sprite list. The rabbit's actions must start whenever the background changes from first screen to game screen. So first remove this when flag clicked block. Similarly, remove the switch backdrop to game screen. Now drag and drop the block when backdrop switches to game screen from the events tool. Now let's run it. Click on the flag button. You can see all the sprites are visible on the first screen. However, we don't need any of the sprites except for the background when the game starts. So, we have to hide all the sprites from the first backdrop. Go to events, drag and drop when backdrop switches to first screen block. Then from the looks tool, drag and drop the hide block below the switch backdrop to first screen block. It means that when the backdrop switches to the first screen, it has to hide the rabbit sprite from the screen. Similarly, we have to hide all other sprites from the intro screen. So simply drag these blocks and drop it on each sprite. Ok, now click on eagle sprite. Separate the block when flag clicked from the rest of the blocks. Attach the when backdrop switches to game screen block to this remaining set of blocks. Similarly, select the cactus sprite, separate the when flag clicked block from the rest of the sprites and add the when backdrop switches to game screen block. Repeat the same for up arrow, down arrow, carrot and apple. Let's take a look at it now. Click on the flag button and here it is. All the sprites are now hidden in the first backdrop. Now that our game has a title, let's add a start button to start the game. For that, click on the choose a sprite option. From here, select this button to sprite. You see, both our background and the button are blue in color. So, let's change the blue button to a different color. For that, go to costumes. Let's change its color. Hmm, how about the color red? Click on the fill tool. Choose red. Then, I am making its border color black. Click on the outer layer of the button. Then click on fill and change the color to black by adjusting the brightness. As I have mentioned before, we selected the sprite button to start the game. So, we have to add a text named start to this button. For that, select the text tool and type start. Make the text color white. For that, click on fill and adjust the brightness and saturation to make the text color white. Bring the brightness to its maximum and reduce the saturation to its minimum. As you can see, the black text has turned white. Change the phone style from handwriting to serif. Select the text start and expand it. Increase the size of the text and adjust the position. Ok, now come back to code. Select the button sprite from the sprite list. Now we can start coding for the start button. For the first block, go to the event block and select the block when flag clicked. Then from looks, add a show block below the first block. So that when the game begins with the first screen, 
the start button will appear along with it. Now, when we click on this start button, the backdrop should change from first screen to game screen. For that, go to events, drag and drop the when this sprite clicked block to the workspace. From looks, attach the switch backdrop to first screen below the when this sprite clicked block. Change first screen to game screen. After switching the backdrop to the game screen, the start button should disappear. For that, we have to hide it from the game screen backdrop. For that, go to the looks and then drag and place the hide block below this switch backdrop to game screen block. Now click on the flag button. Click on the start button. As you can see, even when the game is over, the sprites are still on animation mode in the game over backdrop. To avoid this, first select the rabbit sprite from the sprite list. Then go to the control tool, drag and place the stop all block below the switch backdrop to game over screen block. Ok, now let's have a final look. Click on the flag. And yes, it's ready. The codes are running ideally. With that, we come to an end of our game, The Jumping Rabbit. To wrap up, let's have a recap of what we did in each class. In our first session, we learned how to create an animation of a sprite and how to set time intervals. We added a rabbit sprite to our game then we uploaded a beautiful background which we downloaded from the internet. After that, we added two obstacles to our game, an eagle and a character sprite. Then we adjusted its position and changed code wherever necessary. And finally, when we clicked on the flag button, all the sprites moved accordingly. In the second session, we learned how to overcome these obstacles, that is the eagle and the cactus. For that, we added two sprites, an up and a down arrow sprite. After that, we created a rabbit dunk position by duplicating one of the hair costumes. Ungroup the whole rabbit sprite in order to separate its body parts. Then made changes to its costume. Then we added XY coordinates to set the initial position of the rabbit. Finally, we created a code to make the rabbit jump and dunk when we clicked on the up and down arrow. So, when the up arrow sprite was clicked, the rabbit jumped and when the down arrow sprite was clicked, the rabbit dodged. In the next session, we learn to add a game over backdrop to our game so that when the rabbit hits any of the obstacles, the current backdrop switches to game over. We duplicated the backdrop game screen to this backdrop. We added a text named game over and made it as the game over backdrop. After that, we introduced two new sprites to this game to add points, an apple and a carrot and gave gliding motion to them. Finally, we added a scoreboard onto the stage. So when the rabbit collects either of the apple or carrot, the score increases by 1. From this session, you learned how to add a scoreboard and how to add a game over backdrop to a game. Also learned how to stop all the sprites. Finally, in today's session, you learned how to set an opening backdrop to a game. Then we gave a title to the game as the jumping rabbit. After that, we hid all the sprites from the first screen. We then added a button sprite to our initial backdrop, changed its color to red and added a text named start. Finally, when the start button was pressed, after clicking the flag button, the backdrop switched from first screen to game screen and hid all the sprites from the first backdrop. So, when the rabbit touches any of the obstacles, the backdrop switches to game over backdrop from game screen. From this session, 
you learned how to add a button to the game and learned how to make a sprite disappear. So far, we have learned to create our game. So from now on, you can create your own games using Scratch Senior. So how are you going to develop your game? Okay, let's replace the rabbit sprite using a dog sprite. You have to add two new sprites such that the dog can earn score points. Also, we have to add an obstacle, right? Any ideas? Well, have fun with Scratch Senior. And until we meet with a new topic in an exciting session, it's a vibe.